we're going to do a follow-up session to episode 31. And that's because I've been getting several questions about that video and a bug, and I'll show you what happened. So you'll remember in that episode, we combined these two paragraphs right here to form one paragraph and one sentence that says, hello there from the moon. So let's go ahead and hit this. And of course it worked like it did in episode 31. But if you hit the button again, it disappears forever. And if you keep hitting it, nothing ever comes back. So what we'll do in this video is we'll debug the code to find out what happened first, because that's always important to know exactly where it went wrong. And then we'll try to prevent that from happening. So let's flip over to the JavaScript code. And again, this is all the same code from that video. And let's refresh our page to get back to square one. And then we'll step through the code. Now, the first thing let's do is let's just see what we were doing here. Now, you will remember that we used the get elements by class name to get all of the paragraph elements. And then we took this paragraph, which had an index value of zero. And then we took this paragraph, which had an index value of one, which is right here, of course. And then we combined these two paragraphs into this third paragraph, which has an index value of two. And then what we decided to do is hide these initial two paragraphs. So we did that right here. So let's go ahead and see if this all works. And of course we know it does. Now, where are we at? Well, this code really wasn't designed to hit the button again. But if we do in fact do that, which we will, let's see what happens. Well, the code's gonna come down here and there's really nothing to do, right? It's not gonna be able to combine paragraphs. There's only one paragraph now. So it'll skip all this code and then come down here. Now here's where things go wrong. We're asking to hide this first paragraph. Or actually we're not really hiding it. We're just making the text blank. But in any event, this paragraph that we combined during the first run no longer has this index value of two. It has an index value of zero. So this code will work. It'll hide this paragraph, which now has this index value of zero. So let's hit this button and that's exactly what happened. And now if we hit this button over and over again, nothing will get executed in this function. So that's the bug and let's refresh our page back to normal. So how to fix this? Well, there are a number of strategies that we can do. The first thing we can do is simply hide the button so they can't hit it again. So that's what we're gonna do in this video. We're actually just gonna hide this button to prevent them from doing that. But first we need to give our button here an ID. I don't think we did that in a previous video. So let's flip back here and yes, this will need an ID. Remember, we need to grab this in JavaScript and it's easier to do that with an ID. So let's give this an ID. And we'll just give this a name of test. That should do just fine. So we've got our ID set. So let's flip back to our JavaScript code and we'll go down here and let's actually create some code to hide this button. So what we're gonna do is use one of our very favorite methods, the get element by ID method. And of course the ID that we're getting is test. Now, the object we want to use is the style object. Remember that object? That allows us to do CSS type things in JavaScript. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Now, the property we're going to use is the visibility property. So that's the property that we're going to be accessing. And then the value that we want to set this to is hidden. And so that should hide the button after we click the button. This button should be hidden so that the user can no longer hit it again. So let's save everything up here. Let's go ahead and save this. And uh, you know what, let's actually flip back to our uh, JavaScript code so we can watch this when, when we hit the button. And well, you know what, I didn't need a dot there. That was a mistake. Okay, so you can see there's another bug. <laughs> and now we'll hit our button and there you can see it worked. It got rid of the button and the user can no longer click on it, which would cause that nasty little bug where the text basically disappears forever into the void. But really, we should have warned the user when they hit that button that they couldn't go back, that that button would disappear and that these changes were essentially irreversible. So what we need to do now is actually create a confirmation button to at least give the user a chance to back out of this potential change. And we'll cover that in the next video.